So why did you leave your business job at Singapore to come to India? Paise kaise kamate ho? Because for students, there is no fees. Office mein they have free food, which is. So hello everyone. Today I'm really excited to meet the founder of Zol Company, which is company in US and also controlled in India. And we're gonna know the story of Zol, how it created. From zero to two hundred million dollar company in just six months. And now let's meet Raghu and see how he solved problems of international students. क्या वो U.S. पढ़ने गए थे and how he created Zolve U.S. bank account. And अगर आपको नहीं पता that Zolve is used by four hundred thousand users worldwide in two hundred plus countries. So excited. And Raghu is so humble. He sits with his employees. He doesn't have a cabin. So, hi Raghu. Can you please introduce yourself? I'm so excited to meet you. Hey, yeah, Anul. Lovely to meet you, man. Thank hey, you so much. Hi, this is Raghu. Yeah, very nice to meet you. So, can you please share how you got inspired to create a bank account in the US? Were you an international student that you wanted to solve their problems? So, how it Let's started? Let's walk and talk. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, awesome. So, no, uh, not an international student at all. Uh, so, pretty much uh, live, uh, born, brought up in India, lived uh, all my life in India. But uh, I used to travel a lot, right? Uh, during one such uh, uh, travel, I uh, had met a couple of friends of mine who had just uh, moved to New York, uh -huh. and uh, so they hosted me for dinner. And as usual, uh, right? So whoever is hosting the dinner, they pay the check, oh. right? Oh, when the check came, uh, they took out cash to pay, and I was surprised uh, because in India we don't use cash. We use take a card out, or uh, now these days UPI. UPI, yes. Uh, right. So we never took a ca cash out, and uh, all of a sudden I was surprised that they took cash. In so, New York City, it's New surprising. York, yeah, so then that's when they to, I asked them, why, are, why don't you use your card to pay? So they were like, no, we don't get credit cards. What do you mean by you guys don't get credit cards? Oh, they were students. No, they were not students. So they were working professionals. Uh, my friends, a similar age group, and a couple of them were uh, millionaires. So they were not students. Uh, uh -huh. They were uh, they had uh, they were entrepreneurs who had just moved to the US, uh -huh. and uh, so running CDC plus uh, startups over there. And uh, when uh, and they mentioned that they don't get credit cards because they don't have a local credit history in the US. Oh. And I was surprised, but you guys have an amazing credit history back in India. Why can't you just use it? And uh, they said that no, you can't use whatever that you have in India in the US. And so what are you saying? Because the education degrees that you get in India are valid. The driving license that you have in India is also valid. Then why can't the credit history? So no, this is how the system works. And for an entrepreneur, whenever somebody says that uh, this is how the system works and that is not probably right. So that's when you start thinking about it. I felt it is very, very unfair for any of the new migrants when they go to the new country. That's when uh, they need access to capital, mm -hmm. more and more capital, and uh, that's when the system is designed in such a way that, uh, right, they don't get access to capital because they don't have a credit history, right? And this is like somebody who's low risk in one country. Will continue to be low risk in another country because they don't don't change the behavior based on the location. Mm -hmm. You are what you are. If you're low risk in one country, you'll continue to be low risk in another country also. Just because the financial institutions in one country doesn't talk to the financial institutions in another country, there is this arbitrage where a low risk individual is being treated as high risk, oh. just because they don't have access to information. And that's uh, information arbitrage is a great place to start a business. Wow, and it's mind blowing to see that you never studied in the US just because of one dinner, one conversation. You got that idea that shows how much research you did. Many many people they go to the country, experience it, and then discover the problem. I have also done a other channel, like talking to people and seeing problems. But like I was studying there, I could feel it. But you did so much research, and just with one problem, you tried to solve it immediately. Because, uh, so the research had to be done because the problem is so very obvious, and this problem has. Been Existing for de decades, and I was wondering why is nobody has solved this problem. So it took me a lot of time. Initially, I thought probably Indians end up being treated that way. Then I spoke to a couple of people from Portugal, Canadians, Israelis who had moved to the U.S. I realized that everybody faces the same problem. Then I thought maybe it is just the U.S. system. Then I spoke to some people who had moved to Canada, who had moved to U.K., who had moved to Australia. Everybody has the same problem in every single country. Right, so that's yes. when I realized it's so unfair, uh, right, for the migrants who are migrating for better opportunities. And the first thing uh, engagement that they have with the new country is where, uh, right, a lot of their capital gets locked up in secure deposits. They don't get access to things that uh, uh, the local citizens get have access to for no fault of theirs. Absolutely, so that's how the entire thing started. Yeah, because currently the restriction is anyone who wants to create. 
credit score or credit history in the US, they need credit card. And for credit card, they need social security number. For social security number, they need job. It is a hassle. You solved it by eliminating that step. No SSN needed and you can get a credit card. It's, 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 uh, it's uh, uh, on top of that, uh, the, what we realized was in India, uh, the, we don't use the credit history as such, right? So we use the credit history only to get access to more credit and things like that. But in the US, you know this better than I do, the credit history is used to find uh, accommodation. Uh, an employer does a credit history check before they offer you a, a job and things like that, right? So uh, the credit history just goes, not just sticks only to financial uh, things, but it goes beyond that. So then in that case, it's super important for people to build their own credit history. So that's, a, that's, that's how it works, yeah. Absolutely. Now, while walking, can we please know how you created a hmm. company in the US? I have heard that if someone has to create a company in the US, because you are an Indian citizen, right? Hmm. So being Indian, you created a company in the US. I've heard it's really easy. You don't even need to be in the US. Hmm. You don't need to have a social security number in US. You can create a company in the US. Yes. Was it easy? What challenges you faced? So it was uh, uh, easy. Uh, right, I think the uh, the difficult part was to figure out whether it has to be a Indian company or a US company. Uh -huh. uh, right. So, anyways, we wanted to have two companies at uh, in, one in India and one in the US, and we wanted to figure out which is which should be the parent company. Uh -huh. Should the Indian company be parent with the US subsidiary or the US company to be parent uh, with the Indian subsidiary? Uh -huh. uh, so that's where uh, we uh, we used to do that, and uh, the part of the answer was from our banking partners uh, that we have in the US. So they, uh, most of the partners were comfortable in uh, getting into a legal contract with a US-based company than an India-based company because they wanted the jurisdiction, everything to be in the US. Oh. Uh, so the parent had to be the US company. US company. Uh, then because of which the Indian company had to become the subsidiary of the parent company, right? And uh, given that we started this in the middle of COVID, pre-COVID, second wave, Right, so that's when we started this company. Once it was decided that it will be a US parent, so we got a lawyer who helps. And uh, so nobody used to work in person also in the US. Everything is, was remote then. Wow. During Every, COVID. All remote in India? In India also it was remote because it's in the middle of the second wave. Uh -huh. uh, right, and in the US also everything was remote. So because of which it was a lot more easier for us to do things remotely. Right, COVID was a kind of a blessing that way. Otherwise, we had to open, so probably we had to travel to the US, mm -hmm. right, meet up with the lawyer, so get all those things done. And because everything was remote there, also and here also, so we were able to do this. I mean, you're saying it's easy, but I think it's harder to delegate stuff to employees when they're remote. It is, it, it's, as I told you, right, it's a, it's, it's a good and uh, uh, bad in uh, uh, multiple ways. Uh -huh. uh, good because uh, in the US, uh, everybody was working remotely. Uh -huh. And because of which we didn't really invest in building a US-based team very, very early. Mm. Uh, right, so if you want to work remotely, so we are better off working remotely while from India itself. Okay. Then start investing in uh, US employees. In the US yeah, employees. because it's more affordable here. Uh, it's a yes. lot more affordable and uh, and whenever the uh, office opens up, right, so uh -huh. all the people can come to the office, uh, a product person working with the engineering team or a marketing uh, team is a lot, moves, things moves a lot more faster than trying to work remotely. post covid now we have an office in New York, uh, right, so we have a bunch of uh, folks working out of New York, uh, New York office and we also moved some of our uh, folks from the India office to the New York office also. So that's what we have done. But yeah, it, it, it works uh, both ways. And $200 million market cap in just six months, it is big thing. So did you always had that in mind? You that you a customer base, you have that big market. We started the business, right? it was just an idea. All right. So the proof of the pudding lies only when the rubber meets the rule. All right. So, so initially, so we raised a, a little bit of amount of capital initially just to ensure, uh, build the product and take it to the market, right? And when we, uh, when we focused on August, uh, fall 21 students were going uh -huh. in uh, August that year. So that's when we saw a lot of uh, people whom we got in India who moved to the US, mm -hmm. they became our customers, right? And our entire focus was to focus on people who are in India because mm -hmm. our, we were comfortable in acquiring customers in India. Right? So we acquire these customers and once they move, move, move to the US, they will start using it. And we didn't know anything about acquiring customers in the, uh, uh, in the US. And we, are not had, we didn't have a marketing team also in the US. So there was no reason for us to do any marketing in the US. So we got some 2,000 odd uh, customers in India who went to the US. But after they went to the US, right, we got a lot more customers. By December, we were like 10,000 customers. Wow. With zero marketing in the US, primarily because of word of mouth. 
right this so once the uh, investors start seeing that okay the market has value the uh, the product has a lot of value because there are people who are taking it and started using it not just that and they're referring it to other folks also a lot of other people are also coming into the uh, place so that's how things started working out uh, Why yeah, right. so that one thing led to another and because the opportunity is larger right not just us markets right canadian markets uk markets all the countries in the world have that and same thing right when people moving from back from us to india also the same problem in india right so the market is extremely large and there is a lot of value that we bring to the table and people are using the value all right one is they engaging with the product and they referring the product to other people in a consumer business no repeats and referrals are the two things that matter right That's so right. we had those customers using us and they are referring us to a whole lot of the kids without even in any incentives so that thing led to a good market cap for us wonderful so that was a wonderful story of the revenue jo aapne impact pe focus kiya and it happened now can you please share ki aap paise kaise kamate ho because for students there is no fees huh. no minimum account balance needed <laughs> no application fee huh. no fees for students at all so no. kaise paise kamate ho aap so we don't uh, charge the customers uh, that way so our uh, revenue sources are every time uh, the customer uh, swipes their uh, credit card on any of the merchant uh, pos machines the merchant has to pay us anywhere between 1.5% to 2% uh-huh. as the uh, interchange fee so that's what uh, they pay mastercard or visa yes. and things like that and we get a share of that mm-hmm. so that's that's one part of it right so that's where we make a, a lot of uh, money on that right and our business is really really simple so we primarily acquire customers while they're still in india so our uh, cost of acquiring the customers is in indian rupees almost all the revenues are in us dollars so cost is in a low value currency revenues in a high value currency so because of which the business makes a lot of uh, sense ah that makes sense hmm. yeah okay every time we swipe a card tap a card is a 2% fee 2.5 and american express has 3% fee ah, so, so based on that fees you get some cut so that the customer doesn't pay it's the merchant who merchant pays. pays so for the yeah. customer it's free and my last question will be what is the proud- proudest moment for you at zol so far so uh, interesting so when we um, uh, uh, did all this no it was covid and there was a lot of travel restrictions the only folks who could travel to the us were students so we built a product for the us markets uh, right and none of us had used it right so the only set of uh, people who were using it were the actual customers so none of us were in the us so we couldn't use it at all uh-huh. and uh, so the consumers were using it and after 8 months after we launched when i ended up in the us that, that was the first time i used my card at a starbucks <laughs> so and I, i didn't know whether how the product would work or not work and stuff like that the first time i tapped up a card on a starbucks posh machine right and it works works smoothly and i was like impressed with uh, what the team had built right working remotely right and without even testing the product in the market that way because building something in india you go test it out uh, right they are uh, immediate and you get multiple iterations of testing and uh, our team built something for the us market this is the first time a b2c company has started out building for the us market right without having any india presence uh, right and built something which you haven't even tested completely and it did start working uh, like clockwork so that was like amazing i mean if you have a good vision and if the team shares the same vision right nothing is impossible so that was that was like a very very good kick ass uh, moment that i had epic yeah you are an inspiration creating a company and using it yourself for the first time from the company mind blowing thank you so much for sharing and can i please get to know the story of your first employee yeah yeah oh, please please uh, so nivedita was our uh, the first person who got into this uh, uh, madness uh, right so we go a long way back so she was a uh, part of my uh, previous venture also uh, so she we know each other for quite a long, a long time so uh, in the previous venture i had uh, hired her from a uh, uh directly from campus she's an mba grad from one of the iams so you studied in iam uh, i studied in iam which iam you went to uh, i went to iam amdavad i'm iam amdavad and undergrad undergrad yeah. was in itk suratkar i'm an engineer engineer yeah uh-huh. yeah so nice so uh, you went nivedita so hi nivid nice to meet you thank, thank you so much for having us here thank you so much for dropping by first of all how adventurous or challenging it was very i think you put it right right it was adventurous in the sense uh, being the first wo- person to come on board understanding what is a problem statement so just to call out here uh, i worked with ragu earlier in taxi for sure and ceo's office that was right after my mba and i really like the the energy that he got and the kind of people that have come together so i knew for sure when ragu said he's starting something i quickly jumped on board i didn't know, did not want to miss that ship right uh-huh. so i knew the kind of people will come together the culture 
uh, will be kick ass right so and when i heard about the idea first i was working in a fintech just before zol but this was very different right this was cross border fintech and i go back and see and i surprisingly no one is doing anything in that space which means the opportunity is huge the problem exists i myself i did not study abroad so i spend a lot of time talking to customers talking to other people who moved to us was easier i had a lot of coming from ap andhra so i had a lot of people in the family cousins who moved abroad etc so it was very easy to talk and understand how big a problem it is and then it all made sense things uh, fell in place that's how i joined but uh, very interesting like you said i think it was very very um, adventurous in the sense uh, we we can get a drunk as well right so initially that getting a, a mvp right figuring out what is a product what is a customer and how many people do we get on board to prove that the problem exists that was very interesting for me personally so we've spent a lot of time um, talking to students so we started during covid so we were a lot of us were working from home we were not in office so these they were all on zoom calls google meet sessions getting uh, talking to more people right but it also helped us in a way that uh, we don't have to travel everywhere to meet people in person mm -hmm. so it was easier i've done personally probably around 200 odd student conversations before we started building the product before we started coming up with the business model wow. because i really really need to understand the whole journey right of students so yes. you then, that shows the research you did yeah yeah because they're not just waking up and deciding to study abroad it starts it's, it's a whole year i had this figure out i'm going to study abroad what courses what colleges tuition fees can i sponsor myself right there's a lot of process that goes on so it was very important we understand the whole process leading to the travel so that's how we started but you know uh, we have lot more milestones from then to now the team is also bigger we have people across all functions with people in product business design compliance risk credit and so on uh, but yeah the journey has been great we have come a long way but for a lot of us the the initial uh, lot of milestones that we hit will always be uh, memorable being connected with so many customers you said like 200 plus customers yeah. and going through their journey helps you to see how you can expand the product correct, correct. absolutely so can you can we please see the business side of it yes. so let's meet anand yes they will let's call in anand probably for a now let's get to learn about the business side of things so can you please introduce yourself i am anand i anchor business and growth here so been here for about a year now and prior to this was a partner at bcg in the singapore office so oh so why did you leave your business job at singapore to come to india uh, that also was startup because startups are so hard to manage no no so i think uh, spent about 9 years in consulting and uh, i actually moved across different uh, parts of the world i was in mumbai i moved to new york and then i'm from new york i moved to singapore and uh, on hearing about zol and the problem that they're trying to solve it kind of resonated with me because i've gone through the problem myself twice right where so when, once i was uh, moved from uh, say india to new york ah. right in india you know i was having a hdfc infinia card or something like that very high limit but the moment i landed in the us just because i didn't have a us credit score no bank would give me a credit card right i was uh, had to pay very high deposits and so on right so i faced the issue myself there was a problem waiting to be solved and when i realized that someone was actually doing it i thought you know why not Absolutely. and and the problem didn't end in the us right so i spent couple of years in the us moved to singapore and in singapore no bank would give me a credit card because uh -huh. uh, there was i didn't have a singapore credit score right so the problem happens across the world and i thought it might be you know resonated with the problem quite well and i thought maybe why not you know be a part of the company which is trying to solve a problem which should have been solved a long time back so absolutely yeah. so what business challenge you have solved the biggest business challenge you're proud of at zol so the biggest business challenge that we have solved was you know people who i mean i'll tell you about a thesis right a thesis is that credit worthiness of someone has nothing to do with the location it's just a reflection of their behavior so just because banks don't talk to each other countries don't talk to each other same bureau in one country doesn't talk to the same bureau in another country doesn't mean that a person moving to a new country should face a lot of issues so i think that fundamental uh, thesis or the key problem is what proud of solving and which you continue to do to this day can you please say how zolve has evolved in the last few years as a bank account yeah absolutely right so we started in 2021 uh -huh. august 2021 and that time we were focusing on the india to us corridor and uh, that's how we grew and uh, what ended up interestingly what ended up happening was uh, a lot of uh, international folks 
both students and working professionals they started looking at indians you know using you no know, debit card credit card building credit score from day one and they also started signing up to zol you know while at that time we didn't have a deep integration with bureaus in every different country of the world we were able to come up with new innovative products which could help anyone in the world build credit score from day one so right now we have folks from 100 plus countries wow and we are now open to anyone from the world moving to us even us citizens can create now yeah even us citizens can create a yes. bank account and we actually have that we have a lot of us citizens organically coming to us taking our credit building product and so on by so word that, of mouth right yeah that's that's on the credit card core bank account right the other thing we wanted to solve was like you know for anyone moving to us a lot of challenges like they might want an insurance they might want sim card and you know money transfer and so on so we have tried to cover the entire journey so money transfer from your home country to us and then from us back to your home country you might want to send money back to your parents and so on then health insurance renters insurance sim card auto loans so all of that we have now started adding to our platform so now while we started with a simple us checking account debit card credit card now we have a full stack financial services platform and growing and customers from 100 plus countries so that's what we moved that must be requiring a great engineering team because i have actually seen the android and ios app i have personally used it so yeah. can i please get to know how how it how the product was made from engineering point of view uh, i don't think i am the right person to answer that maybe i'll introduce you to a tech head ritul sure. so maybe he should be uh huh sure hey hi i'm ritul a mic there done yeah hi ritul yeah i'm doing well so excited to know about your engineering journey at zolf wow such a great thing to talk to you so everybody here in this team has uh, worked on very high scale system in india wow. uh, and there are people who have worked in the uh, system like aadhar also ah. so high security system so we at zol i mean as you know that we are in banking services where in security data security is, is the best and most important thing for us Certainly. so we have uh, made sure that we have right system in place we have s2h security data security and we have also have so many uh, machine learning based tool which help us know and keeps our system improving every single time when any anomalies have been detected so i mean this is more on security we have also worked on high end uh, cutting edge technology to provide some of the cool feature outside of the world like uh, zai in terms of this ultra edge of i uh, ai we have introduced some of the features like wherein you just go and then search for it talk to your bot uh, talk to your ai bot and then speak instead of going and navigating through the app and understand how your systems are what are the transitions you have done you can just have fun talking to the ai and then get all the results i'm really surprised how you made the product so fast how much time it took all the apps you made <laughs> our uh, our roll out strategy and release is so fast like we have worked uh, initial launch we have done in what less than 6 months of time wow yeah and then later uh, i mean we roll out features we try out i mean we have different features like remittance and all we just roll out very quickly That because was very fast yeah, and underline the one thing which is very common which also uh, puts into delay if it happens at all that security that's it nothing else very nice thank you so much for sharing it was pleasure meeting you nice talking to you thank you sure. so much uh-huh. iske baad i got the opportunity to a meet up main sirf ek hi meet up kar paya bangalore mein it will be cheaper and india mein kar lete hain and i knew it is possible and made it possible everyone told me the us factory you cannot uh, run a youtube channel But I made it possible as well. But thank you so much for everyone for coming and showing up. And in the end, I will just say that yeah, it has been wonderful being a Zolve customer. And if you're coming to the US, definitely check out Zolve with the link in description below.